I don't know why I'm focused on China, because that's not where we're playing. Uh, if you don't know where we're playing, Top of the Morning Day, Lattice. Uh, we're back. Um, yeah, so uh, this investigation thing's getting pretty weird. Uh, we left out off the uh, last part, finding out the guy who we thought died at the first part is still fucking alive. Also, uh, McCadden, I'm hydrating. Fuck you for that. Doherty's still pieced together in his mind how Obrata Brada could have done it. Certainly he had the car blown up anyway, with a few pieces of personal belongings inside to make it look like he was taken out of the blast. Then he had the witness set up to tell him how the UVF did it. That much was certain, as long as he lay low, the Garda would never have suspected him of being alive. But that didn't explain what his game was. The inspector still found it hard to concentrate, but he tried to go on with searching the house anyway, opening cabinets and drawers to find something of interest. Then a soldier who had been searching upstairs shoved a book into his hands, with a remark that he would find it interesting. Doherty started looking, and he found that assessment to be accurate. Record of finances for the IRA. Payments, bank account transfers, all was in here. Doherty stopped what he was doing and sat down at a kitchen table to read deeply. That was the key to the entire operation that Obrata was doing. Soon he took out of his pocket a notebook and started noting items of interest. There's one item he found very interesting. The IRA, like any decent criminal organization, had taken pains to prevent their finances from being uncovered. Thus, they relied on a complex series of fund transfers between bank accounts to disguise payments and income. Like, for instance, this payment would be routed through several accounts and made out to... Pull ICG. And this similar payment would go to Pull ICG. Wait, why was a Breda funding the ICG's political wing? Follow the money. Well, we're back in fashion. Also back in confusion. Don't waste your time plan again. We've got what we need. So, what's so sudden that you have to interrupt the questioning? We got records from the bank. We have all the transcripts from Obradiga's account from them. A bunch of them keep going to the same account. Those accounts combined with the records of the safe house have been identified as belonging to the IRA. So this man was repeatedly sending what the inspector is saying is that there is no citizen's god. Obradica's been intentionally funding a front this entire time. It's no stretch to think the IRA was behind the whole scheme. It took a moment for Flanagan to understand what he had just heard. Upon realizing, he immediately turned to Obrata and asked, What the hell? Obrata gave a slow chuckle. I have to be honest, it took you a lot longer to figure out the scheme than I would have thought. I suppose it would have been this successful. Never thought it would be this successful, though I suppose the guard is a bit smarter than the army. Well, Fregnus, I, I suppose, Blaney so badly wanted an unofficial organization who could fight the Protestants. That was his plan all along. Trick Blaney to providing your guns, organize a coup, and then turn his unwitting accomplices. It's lucky we figured out what he was up to before he could pull it off. Well, you're wrong about one part, Inspector. We never intended to march on Dublin at all. We merely needed your attention away from Belfast. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Dublin today. I know my time here is unfortunately limited, and the luncheon will begin right after, so I will be brief. So walk through the exhibits here, with displays of paintings and sculptures from our finest artists. Enjoy the performances we have for you. I want you all to take in, keep in mind. Doubtless you've heard of Ireland's troubled history and economic issues before coming here. I cannot tell you that these have been myths. Ireland's young country is still struggling to take off, but what you have seen and heard is a small size of Ireland's potential eventually soar. So when you leave here, I w w wish that you would remember this potential, and remember that all you have seen can be experienced every day in Ireland, making it a pleasant place not just to invest in, but work in as well. Now before I go, I will remind you that we are planning a series of exhibitions just like the one you've seen here among the Upper East Coast of the U.S. Park a Avenue Armory has agreed to host one in New York City. We expect a to close a deal with venues in Boston and a Canadian location shortly. There will be a government mentally funded venture. Three sponsorships are available, and Jameson Irish Whiskey and American Airlines have signed on to be the lead ones. I hope that you and your companies might consider a visit to these locations as well, preferably as a host of an exhibit like you have seen. The search for investment never ends.
inflation will decrease. I'm back and I have cake. Wonderful. Uh, can I expect my slice in the mail? Now we're back to the um, the German credit rating, right? I think we're coming up on the end here, folks. So, want sprinkles? Because if so, I can go buy some. You don't need to do that. Thank you, Mike. <sighs> Walk me through this again, grumbled Shalomass, pouring a glass of whiskey that he was certain he shouldn't be having. You're saying that the citizen's god isn't real. Yes, sir. Tuomi has made the whole thing up to soak up support from the markedly pro-German military forces in the region. Are we absolutely certain? Can we really have been so outplayed? So up until now, we have been. The path forward is yours to choose, and you do have some options. I should send in all the troops to cut down the rass bastard Tuomi for all this, but all right, he deserves it. You could, sir, as he say, he deserves it. However, I'm sure that the moment I leave this office, your military advisor will tell you all the solution is immediate military crackdown on all military groups. But there's another choice too, isn't it? Now we finally have a full view of what's happening, who the players are. It's very possible we could round up the leadership and try to force a compromise. What about you, Inspector? What would you advise? His respect for the humble officer had grown immensely in the past few days. He was the only man in Ireland who outwitted Tuomi. Uh, respectfully, sir. If I were to tell such. Alright, so this is where we decide the ending of Ireland, I believe. So if we do this... Bad shit happens. If we do this, bad shit happens. I think if we do this, not so bad shit will happen. So, snatch up the IRA and the UVF leadership. Force a compromise. I think that's how this works. I might be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. But I might be wrong. Okay. Well, Mass never had a choice in the end. He knew he couldn't trust the military to carry an operation like this. Hell, he couldn't have the military doing anything at all. Massive conflict at this time would break the country. And for what? To set Ireland back to the status quo? Now, there was another option. To leak a bit of a news, not enough to be politically disastrous, but enough to get everyone to know what was going on. And then everyone, the army, the guard of the UVA, would be on full alert. It would be a tense situation, but wouldn't be, it would be just a thing to get the moderate unionists on the table. Such a standoff could not be won by either side, so we would nip any terrorist movement in the bud. And then they might be brought to the negotiating table. This was perhaps the most complicated and time-intensive plan. So many things could go wrong. There would be protests, certainly. There would be violence in the street, streets of Belfast. And not everyone who was responsible for this disaster would get justice. And at the end of the day, a single misstep could destroy everything that Lomas would work for. But the reward would be a peacefully united Ireland, under Fianna Foyle. And Lomas knew he was a man knew he was known as a man who would do what was necessary for Ireland at the first party. Maneuver to save the Isle. What flavors of the cake, Mike? I'm curious. Oh, geez. So we got a lot of stuff we got to do, actually. Okay. Chocolate? Okay. Which is either the best way to deal with the arms crisis through peaceful resolution of conflict. Unfortunately, it isn't as simple or as easy as just declaring that we want peace and calling it a day. The arms crisis didn't come out of nowhere. There are major tensions thrumming throughout Northern Ireland that have persisted for decades that won't simply disappear in the name of peace. Ian Paisley desires tolerance for the Protestants of the North and independence for Ulster. Seamus Tomey desires armed revolution and personal power. Neither desires will sit well with a Doyle or with I each other and the respective followers. The time where hatred and revenge are the driving force of a day, negotiating a path to peace between the two iron wills of these conflicting desires will require navigating a veritable minefield. Fun. The NIC has been disabled. We're not corruption. Do that. So what is that? Let's 
Is really about to go war for Argentina? Is that what that's about? <sighs> you want to do what? Said Sean Lamasta, Ion Keen. He had been a member of the Guard who had quick, quickly risen to the top for his actions in the arms crisis, and now he had a minute with Sean Lamas, the current leader of Ireland. It's very simple, Mr. Lamas. I'm sure you know Paisley and the Ptolemy are still loose after the past weeks. We didn't have any leads on them until yesterday. We learned through agents embedded inside the paramilitary groups that they have spread out across Ulster County. With this knowledge, now I propose a trap to arrest them both. He said, motioning to a pamphlet placed on Lamas's desk. The Toysuk opened it and flipped through the pages. King continued, As you can see, the trap proposed would work as stated. We would propose a ceasefire and amnesty, and the two agreed to represent with representatives of the Irish Garda, along with you. Hold on, this wasn't in your little stack of papers right here. As he motioned towards the pamphlet. King continued, almost looking like he expected Lamas to say that. Well, you'll have on a bulletproof vest just in case, plus the Garda will surround the meeting just in case things get hairy. Lamas looked at Keen and then back at his papers before replying. This might be crazy enough to work. Might. Um. Hmm. I might end this a little early, actually. I did just restart a new part. Just, I did just start a new part, excuse me. But, um, I do gotta get ready for some stuff in a second. So, um, this will be a bit of a shorter part for the YouTube people. Uh, but thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you, uh, next time. Goodbye.